Welcome to Photo Finds. I am your host, Kevin, and this week we are starting in Pleasure Island at Downtown Disney, where, as you can see, the walls have gone up. That is because the Disney Springs expansion has begun, <clears throat> and uh, they will shortly be taking out uh, the building behind these walls. That is the Comedy Warehouse building, so it will soon be removed completely. And uh, the rumor has it, uh, this is the uh, modern-day equivalent of a bus driver told me, so a security guard told me, that all of these buildings are coming out. The Mannequins Building, the Apricot Lane Boutique, uh, which will not be replaced or moved anywhere else, the 8-Tracks Building, and the Curl Building around the corner from there as well. Curl, however, is moving over to uh, the area next to uh, Splitsville over in the west side. So Curl will be moving onwards, but the entire block otherwise, now this is the back side of the block, from the Comedy Warehouse over through the Curl, 8-Tracks, and over a to Ap Apricot um, Boutique, Apricot Lane Boutique, and the Mannequins, will be leaving to make room for the uh, Disney Springs expansion um, and uh, the disruption of Planet Hall uh, the uh, of the uh, Pleasure Island area. Now, uh, what's behind here is the BET Soundstage. I don't know if this is being changed and the uh, Adventures Club removed as well. Both of those are kind of behind these sorts of potted plants. This is the artwork that is up on the construction wall, uh, and it uh, plays kind of last, fast and loose, as you can see, with actual geography. I mean, you've got uh, the uh, Raglan Road right next to World of, uh, World of Disney, which is not obviously the way it is, or that the Lego store is nowhere close to uh, Disney Quest, but uh, they're really just showing a, a different skyline, I guess, and trying to get you excited about it. This was new on my trip down uh, Pleasure Island. I have previously seen new stands for Raglan Road. This is a stand for Paradiso 37, selling these giant Mardi Gras um, or martini um, and uh, um, kind of goblets, I guess they are. <clears throat> and I didn't get a close look at what they were. I, I just called them martinis. They're margaritas, um, kind of goblets. But uh, I didn't get a close look at what the, the drinks were that they were selling. Further on in downtown Disney, this is in front of Portobello, you see the uh, taco truck, which is uh, closed as this picture was taken. It was somewhat late in the evening. <clears throat> so now they've got a food truck uh, that has taken up semi-permanent residence in downtown Disney. Uh, there's, uh, this was previously over by Splitsville, so they're obviously playing with different locations for it. And just outside from there are some tables and chairs that a friend assures me were once from Mannequins. These are repurposed uh, for the outdoor area now. I wasn't in Mannequins often enough to notice myself. And just across the way from there, still in the area in front of Portobello, you can see the T-Rex sign in the background, uh, is a semi-permanent tent now. Uh, they're selling more liquor bottles as well as a semi-full bar, as you can see in the background there. So there, uh, the, the nightlife has taken on some of these additional uh, kind of street vendor feels to them. Uh, rumors keep going that Captain Jack's is coming on its last day very soon. <clears throat> this seafood restaurant is next to T-Rex, I'm sorry, next to Reinforced Cafe, which is undergoing its own um, renovation right now and the addition of something called the Lava Lounge. <clears throat> And uh, the Captain Jack's restaurant may become home to a bridge over to the other side of downtown Disney, over by World of Disney. This kind of caught my eye while we were here. The Lego structure that's long been there um, takes on an unusual reflective quality uh, at nighttime so that those semicircles look like O's. So this looks like he's saying Lou um, if you look at the whole character. Now, it was Star Wars Weekends. This past weekend was the first weekend of it. Uh, and we'll be looking at a number of what's new for Star Wars Weekends this time around. But while we're here outside of DHS, uh, I thought I would show you a picture here of the sign pointing you to the vacation planning booth, uh, which really is um, an unusual euphemism for ticket booth. Now, this is nothing new for Disney. They've called them that for many years. They used to be called ticket sellers and ticket takers. <clears throat> but many years ago, moved internally to this vacation planning concept. You just don't often see it that way in front of the guests, and that's what caught my eye. <clears throat> so, just inside the gates now, Star Wars Weekends has its own booth set up just uh, by the cross ro uh, crossroads so that they can distribute their special maps and parade maps and those sorts of things. And like all Star Wars Weekends, there are special guests who do, um, who do signings and those sorts of things special merchandise. This time I did get a picture of what the drinks are from this case served from in front of the Primetime Cafe and you can see that they are uh, mixed drinks um, with a Star Wars theme. 
Leaving Star Wars aside for just a quick second, we're at Backlot Express, where I had not noticed this before, a special bucket, uh, um, souvenir bucket, child's meal. Uh, at least I assume it's meant for children. Uh, it's got um, a lot of different side items, I guess is the way to think of those, uh, for $12. So I had previously shown you the Dumbo one, uh, which was really just for popcorn. Uh, now there's a Lightning McQueen souvenir thing. So maybe this is a bit of a trend happening at the Disney parks. Back to Star Wars Weekends, where they have um, made the schedule about as full as they can make it at the Jedi Training Academy. In fact, it's falling off the sign. There are so many shows scheduled over here. Obviously very popular. And I'm not sure what caused this momentary blip, but uh, this is the end of the Fast Pass Return line for Star Tours way up in the distance. Uh, it being Star Wars Weekends, I guess everyone wants to go on Star Tours. So, we are at the area behind Tower of Terror. This is Darth's Mall, the merchandise, special merchandise location. If we turn around and look at uh, the Hollywood Tower Hotel, we'll get a, a unique view you don't get very often. Uh, so I think I'll go ahead and zoom in a little bit and show you uh, how disconnected these two areas are and that they themed it all the way down, which I think is a, a wonderful thing. It's a really interesting sight to see from this corner of the, of the park. They have several of these kind of uh, photo locations set up, some with PhotoPass, and uh, often there are characters there in front of them. Not all of them are back here. Some of them are over in the back lot area as well. <clears throat> Just inside that merchandise tent, you'll see some statues you can take pictures with. There's a salacious crumb up here who uh, might, in fact, be uh, identical to the one that they're selling inside, and we'll get there. They've uh, long, long had, or at least last year had, these personalized name tags, which lets you use Arabesh to say your name and choose a location that you're from. So the locations could include, as you can see, Alderaan, Hoth, and so forth. This year they've also added titles, Bounty Hunter, uh, an Imperial or Padawan, that sort of thing. Uh, and they've also added this black color, which is uh, specific for annual pass holders, pass holder specific. $10, not a bad price for... Um, personalized name tags, run by this D-Tech company, uh, which is also giving us this this year. So they've previously done the frozen and carbonite yourself thing, and now it's yourself as a stormtrooper. And these are about as tall as a dollar bill, maybe a little taller than that. Uh, and as you can see, they, they are pretty personalized um, when the 3D printing is done. There's what the machine looks like where they capture your face, and this is what the um, freeze me and carbonite thing looks like. You get a, a sense for how big they are. Obviously, there's some scale problems going on here because this person in the background is not standing right next to the carbonite. It's not quite that big as it makes that look in that picture. So as we look around the tent a little bit, we'll see Ashley Eckstein, who is a, one of the voice actors, and Ashoka, um, the character Ashoka in The Clone Wars. She's also uh, the creator of this Her Universe line of clothing, and she's an Orlando local. So I always like to uh, call out Ashley whenever we can. Some of the limited edition merchandise includes these special pins and patches. You can see the 30th was kind of a running theme for the special pins. There's that salacious crumb I mentioned. He's a $30, maybe it was $35, and made out of latex. Uh, looking somewhat realistic, actually, for a $35 toy. Uh, but this being Florida, I didn't want to um, buy something latex because I figured it would probably melt on me. Some limited edition designs. This Mickey one is on, on Splash on many of the designs, as well as Chip and Dale as Ewoks uh, on many of the limited edition things. So there's a photo opportunity in the back here. You can take your picture with R2-D2 around the corner from this over on the right, and then uh, with the Rancor, uh, which was a prop from one of the other conventions run nearby. More of the merchandise. Um, Disney characters put into the Star Wars universe. You get to see Donald as Boba Fett. And what I found interesting here, these are not big figs. These are not little figs. These are medium figs. So the big fig concept has been augmented now with ones that are about half as tall as the big figs. And this one is $99, which interestingly was the price of the big figs when they were new. In the corner, around the side from the artwork exhibit and uh, gallery where they're selling the prints as well, they've got a construct a Lego wall thing set up. So kids can come over here and help build the Lego wall. The side from there has um, some merchandise and uh, uh, merchandise uh, stations so that's where the cashiers are, and then a snack stand set up in the side with those same drinks we looked at earlier. It was crowded. That's what this picture is meant to represent. I'm holding my camera up and just kind of shooting blindly. Uh, it's not so easy to maneuver throughout Darth Small, although this was the opening weekend and maybe that was part of the reason for it. 
<clears throat> now, there's quite a bit of merchandise that uh, struck me as new. I don't think I've seen this before, where Disney Star Wars characters, if you follow me, Disney characters dressed up as Star Wars, uh, are now paired with um, action figure toys like the Jedi Starfighter. And they can actually go in there. There's a spot for them to go in. So that's a neat little crossover thing. And they're doing a lot of these crossovers with Disney characters and the Star Wars universe. It seems to be the theme. That's a somewhat large Darth Vader. Um, the size and scale is not so apparent here. It's um, more than a foot tall, actually. More of the crossovers. Now, they've previously had Muppet Star Wars crossovers. I'm not sure if this one was new for this year, uh, but, the, uh, but the other, some of the other ones did strike me as new. They always have a Stitch crossover character, uh, and for some reason we always buy it. Got several years of those. I loved this one. I don't think it was uh, around last year, though it could be wrong. Um, obviously, C-3PO and R2-D2. Muppet characters. More of the Star Tours toys, and uh, there are so many sets of these, I'm not even sure what I own already and what I don't own, but I'm going to need to get them, I think, at some point. There's the other one that struck me as new this year, Bean Bunny, the Muppet character, uh, as uh, Wicket. And then uh, one of the chickens has a Stormtrooper. Star Wars Vinylmations are not new, but they were out in force, and uh, obviously trying to push it on us at the same time. And then a whole series of these. Now this is the back of the uh, back card of one of the characters. I'm going to show you the characters in a second. You see they're $13, and what they are are the Cars cars given a Star Wars theme. Now they've done Star Wars theme on matchbox size cars before, but they're kind of lumpen, grotesque-shaped things. They weren't from the Cars cars. And so when you see the actual Cars cars, there's um, Mater Vader. There's Lightning McQueen as uh, Luke Skywalker. I think there's a level of cuteness here that is just not present in the ones they did before when they did like a C-3PO inspired matchbox car. It didn't look very good. These look fantastic on the other hand. They really, um, they're almost funny to look at just in and of themselves, uh, which bespeaks something about uh, the nature of these characters that, um, that really lasts even beyond the movie. I love the um, buns being extra tires on the Princess Leia character. And this, the Thermal Detonator, which is a hot potato game, as the back of the, the box tells you. You simply toss the Thermal Detonator back and forth until it makes a sound and quote-unquote explodes. Towels for sale, as well as some of the t-shirts you can get in Darth Small. Many of them celebrating Star Wars weekends directly, rather than celebrating Star Wars. So there's another one that lists Star Wars weekends, uh, as well as the specifications of the speeder bike or you know, uh, other designs that they had for Star Wars Weekend specifically. And then some little kid t-shirts, just like Dad, Boba, and Jango. Um, and then this one with the uh, Ewok and the Mickey hat. And then finally, Future Jedi Master. I think that one's been around actually for some time. This looked new to my eyes, the Star Wars Mickey gift card. And from there, we jump to the Hyperspace Hoopla, which this year has a muzzling of Snig and Oopla. It's almost the Emperor Palpatine show in some respects. Uh, but we still get to see many of our favorites like Figure and Dan and the modal nodes. And uh, This is a show you've really got to see to understand entirely what it is we're talking about. Uh, but that takes us to the end of this week. And uh, we're looking forward to next week where we'll have the 24-hour Disney Day. Until then, thanks for watching as always. And we'll catch you next time.